might be a bit long Whoa, but uh, y'all hey oh it's so fun to see friends and chat that's great no it's a good thing vincent don't worry about it Maybe the first thing i want to share is that i am going to be drinking this tonight it's a beer big beer big triple this is the small bottle and then um... oh yeah Drinking a beer to get things started. Things might be worse. Am I right? All right. I had a bit of a plan set up. The thing I don't have set up yet, though, is um, my just chatting stream segment or what you call that thing. It looks like this right now. Just thought I'd share. <laughs> not very useful. I don't think I'll be doing that uh, live on stream. Huh? Yeah, the pizza table is so nice. Oh wait, wrong, uh, wrong thing. Right. Uh, cheers. Right. The thing that I've prepared is, let me look at my cheat sheet a little bit. Because I wrote stuff down. 
and obsidian, which is a tool I've been using lately. <clears throat> right. So first things first. Uh, I would officially like to thank Jones, aka Jonathan, to uh, inspire me to pick this thing up again. Um, and uh, yeah, it was good that uh, I think at least it will be good that I'm doing this thing again. It was a bit of a, a happenstance, let's say, that everything merged into the one thing that I wanted to do again, which is doing live coding. I've been wanting to pick it up again for a while, but just never happened to, uh, to actually get into it again. Even though I was coding and then Jones, the person that likes to um, do the software sandbox. Software sandbox, software sandbox. Um, he uh, just started announcing, I'm just going to do stuff every Tuesday from now on. And I'm going to announce it in the Slack channel that we're all on. And then, uh, yeah, to do that. And he is uh, broadening his horizons because he's going to start learning how to code uh, games. And yeah, so that really inspired me to start to pick this thing up again. And uh, here we are. Last week, I put the stream labs thing together again and now i'm doing the stream so very exciting um then another thing that i wanted to share is what i've been up to so since yeah i don't remember when the last time was but it's gonna be like two and a half years ago or something ah there he is jonesy so thank you uh jones Whoa, and the sub jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rat. What I wanted to say is, uh, what was it? Oh, yeah, since the last time that I started streaming or stopped streaming, it was Advent of Code 2022, I believe. It's been uh, like ages ago already. Um, what have I been up to since then? I'm still working for Kun Labora. I'm uh, blissfully employed, I would say. And um, that's still going well. We're doing uh, Kotlin projects right now. They're, we've got, I think, about four of them in production at the Belgian Pension Services, which is fantastic. I couldn't have uh, dreamed of anything better than that. Um, so that's great. Um, still hosting the Socrates open spaces at work or at Kunabore and Leuven. And since this year, so somewhere in October, I forget what the date really is, um, I'm also facilitating the open space or the unconference, I should say. Uh, so that's going to be very exciting. And then what else? Oh, yeah, um, last week, we had uh, the great open space at, uh, at Kunabore and uh, in the office. Uh, Moosh is looking for some programming work so he can escape from his current work. Need any help? Ah. Nice, nice. I'm not sure how, if I can help with that, but <laughs> let's find out. Eh? Uh, if you live in Belgium, there's a chance that I can. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, what else did I want to say? Um, yeah, uh, this, well, actually not this month yet, but next month in May, at the end of it, there's the uh, Kotlin Conf, which I hope to have uh, given a, a nice presentation, but um, it's not gonna happen. Um, I put in my proposal, but it got denied, unfortunately. So we'll see who is going to give a similar talk than I would have. Uh, I'm very curious how, how they solved uh, that specific part. I'm just hoping to have a good time there. So if you're going there, um, come say hi or, or let me know. Otherwise, then uh, we'll see each other there. Have some beers. Maybe, I don't know how, how good the beer is over there. Supposedly, I think it's Carlsberg that's from Denmark. So yeah. Which is probably the best beer in the world, or so they, they say. Um, something else that I want to, sh to share, sorry, is um, I've been doing some. Um, ah, yeah. Where was that? I put it in the 
this lens. I've been doing some um, lightning talks and just presentations in general over the year. And I wanted to share a couple of those. So something that I did was uh, Atomic Habits. So that was uh, one of the, uh, so a, a more large presentation, let's say where like about 45 minutes where I give uh, my learnings or my takeaways of the book, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Then there was um, the accountability presentation that I gave at Kunlabora, which is more about uh, vulnerability in fact, which is um, yeah, a very hefty or difficult presentation to give, I think. So there was Atomic Habits, which I forgot to go like that. And the other one that I did, ah, yeah, I've got one small presentation about the notebooks, which is a, a new feature that came out over the years. Um, and how we are using that in our current team to um, draw graphs of uh, flow metrics. So like lead time, um, the, the aging chart of stories, etc. All based or inspired by the book called When, it, when Will It Be Done? Which is a very interesting read. And then I gave another smaller presentation called Sketching a Domain Model with code where I can show you how you can very easily and very fast uh, create a domain model, not necessarily a working one, but at least a way to explore a domain model very fast using, um, uh, using Kotlin now. <laughs> the best beer in the world is Crystal Love, okay. Yeah, some will uh, argue with that. Ah. My speaking volume fluctuates highly depending on whether you're speaking directly into your mic or not. Ah, yeah. All right, that's a uh, good feedback. Thank you. So if I go like this, you'll hear my voice change all the time. So I've got the ASMR mic going on. Um, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, the last couple of two and a half years, I guess. Oh, yeah, maybe I'll add a putting Kotlin apps in production. <clears throat> Column four of them. Ah, uh, yeah. So this is the stuff I've been doing. It's a, uh, it's great. Um, what else? Yeah, so the next thing that I wanted to, to do or to address, which is really uh, why I'm streaming again, uh, maybe that's worth mentioning uh, in its on its own in fact. So <clears throat> I work as a, as a developer for Kunabora, right? Um, and um, in this organization, we've got an, a very big variance of, of people's skill levels. Of course, we want to keep a nice pyramid of um, seniors, also not that many seniors and more people that go towards juniors so that it's, it's the, the growth is like normal, let's say. Um, but when you hire a lot of junior people, you'll have to somehow teach them a little bit on what we consider to be basic skills at the, in, our, in our teams. So to help with that, we started an initiative called the Crafters Bootcamp. And this is something that I do my best to lead, um, but it's been very difficult. So I get help, which is great. And um, so I've got a couple of colleagues that are helping me out with that. And over the year, we've been um, just, how do you say, um, learning new stuff at like a, a nice pace. Um, and then one of the things that we have been learning is um, Apprenticeship Patterns, which is uh, a book by uh, at O'Reilly. You can just read it if you want, it's for free. And in one of the patterns of this Apprenticeship Patterns thing is called a breakable toy. So it's something that you build 
where um, that can, just can fail, but the whole idea is that you build it so that you can learn on it. And um, most of us, we believe that this is the thing that's going to help us uh, the best with like on, on the next thing that we're going to do. So um, in order to help out with that a little bit, I created this um, story map. Um, and this is also the, the thing that I would like to do on stream. And it's been, I've been working on it al already a little bit so that I could help uh, people out already. So here, here's a Dutch version, but I'll just translate it. So Kunla Quota, it's a, I know it's a silly name. If you've got a better one, please share it. Uh, it's just a web app that's going to try to um, improve camaraderie within a community by allowing that community to share funny quotes. So that means that users or people can add new quotes, which are then watched and shared by other users so that they can then be encouraged to write their own quotes or share them, etc. That's the whole idea. So just fun little thing. It's very simple. And um, in this app, Quote Labora, it's maybe already a little bit better. Yeah. Um, so keep them coming at eh, those suggestions. Uh, and what we've got already is so you can browse quotes, then you can add quotes. And there's also sharing of quotes and then there's also like another thing where we can just do some integration with whatever um i've also divided all of this stuff up into uh, some milestones maybe it's also worth going over this part a little bit so this is purely a fictional or fic fictional uh, application to so fictional company as well that's supposed to be behind this and um i've thought about how the, how well they want to scale it might be a bit optimistic but so in the first phase they're expecting five users to be using their their app so good enough to get like small base so that they can get uh, some tested validated um, then in phase two which is another 90 days they expect to be 50 people using it so that's already a little bit more usage yeah to then go to a thousand after uh, another year, then to scale up to 400,000 and eventually a million people that's, uh, that's going to be using that stuff. <laughs> cool quote registration system. That's already taken indeed. <laughs> so <laughs> it's funny that you mention it. So uh, we used to have this app, similar usage. It should be um, a breakable toy. We used it. Uh, and it was useful actually and we put in some some funny quotes in there i remember b the the, the hotkeys being very popular there like being able to enter a quote while uh yeah entering it was was really nice uh, then i also came up with a bunch of constraints that are quite arbitrary but might help them um keep their application or the, their code a little bit simple so we want to explore learning or we want to learn a little bit more in about backend stuff so we're gonna have to do it either in java or in kotlin or you can choose a mix if you want but we'll all just choose gradle that way we can easily learn from each other it's also one of the points that we want to be learning about we're choosing Spring Boot because it's mostly used in our uh, applications that we write or the projects that we, we build ourselves. So it makes sense to do it in Spring Boot. Same for Cradle, by the way. It should be accessible via a REST API. So they get to deal with that. And then the constraint is to first start off with layered architecture. So keeping it very simple and then maybe later make a hexagon out of it. It's just something that we can evolve into. If you don't know what any of these things mean, that's fine. Um, I hope you can stick around long enough to learn along with us. And then they shouldn't build a UI or if they do, it should not be at least their, their focus point. Uh, just make it a simple one then. It's always more fun to, to build one though. And then the end-to-end -end tests entry point st should start from the REST API. So that 
should help them make sure that whatever that they've built is going to work properly in the end as well. Eh? All right, so this is the stuff that we did during the kickoff. So they all built a component diagram. Uh, then we set up our own private GitHub repositories. Uh, I think even mine will be private for now, but we can change it later. And then uh, I told them to start off. So we kicked this off, uh, just start off a Spring Boot project using Gradle and then pick and choose whatever Spring Boot modules you want um, to then start coding. Yeah? So then we did make a little rest point or something small yeah, so that we can just um, get that thing running without having to save anything to a database. Then we did uh, make sure that the rest point can save something in some kind of an, in memory database. Add another rest point where you can then fetch the thing you saved. And then it's just completing all of the, the, the entire milestone. So I did all of the stuff in this order. Um, the code where I am now is I'm about to do this story here where uh, as a reader I want to share a quote that made me chuckle so that I can share the chuckles with my colleagues. Oh no, Sarah. Sarah, you disappoint me. That's very bad. I'm not going to do a French accent, neither. Or I could start talking like this, talking with a British accent. No, I will not do that. Uh, we be fromage. Yes, we be fromage. Very good. <laughs> the disrespect. Uh. I spent, uh, when was it? I spent five days in Glasgow the other week and uh, I really had a very difficult time adjusting to the dialect. Like some people I simply couldn't understand with the, with the, the heavy, what's it called, a pro or something like that. Could not, could not understand any of it. I think that the, the first one was a bus driver, so I just couldn't understand. <laughs> I think he gave up trying to uh, explain himself. He's just get on the bus, so we started moving. But yeah, uh, Glasgow, highly recommend, or just Scotland in general. Very nice country to visit. Um, okay, so what did we do before? So we did the browse all so as a reader i want to view all the quotes so that i can chuckle at the newest ones we've got i'm not sure if this will be readable enough maybe if i go like this and then da, da, da. No. unfortunately we'll have to uh, deal with this uh so anyone can read these quotes ideally they're sorted with the most recent at the top a quote can be a one-liner told by one person so like this and a quote can also be a conversation between multiple people. So it would be like a multi-line quote. And then when reading a quote, it should be clear who said what and when the quote was entered. So this part, actually, now I realize I'm, I've got one thing that I haven't uh, implemented yet. So I guess we'll start off by doing that maybe. Um, and this is just a simple representation of, of what that quote can look like if parsed properly by a UI. Then adding a quote um, just adds that, yeah, you can just add those quotes in, in their form. But also I want a verification that my entered quote was registered successfully. Yeah, so good job, uh, you managed to post this quote and here's the ID for it or something like that. Or to be told something went wrong so that I can try again. So it should provide you with enough information to then just try again and have your quote be saved properly. Um, so those two things I did already, aside from keeping the date. Um, and then the next thing that I was gonna do is the, to share a quote. So I want to share a quote that made me chuckle. And 
the, the caveat here is that we don't want to reward people for sharing. We want to reward the people that wrote the quotes in the end. So that's something that uh, is like a little bit of a vision thing. Chuckle me timbers. <laughs> So if you can read a quote, you can also share a quote. A shared quote can only be read on the app so that we bring more attention to the app and incentivize people to add more quotes. When a quote is shared twice, the same link or reference should be used. And we don't want to reward people for sharing. Because <clears throat> then you would just share, 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 share. And every time you would use a new reference. Um, so given a quote with ID 1234, when this quote is shared, then an HTTP link to this quote is returned that includes a reference to this quote, for example, in an, the URL of the application where the quote share has some kind of an identifier. It should not be the identifier uh, of your, well, it should not be the primary key of your quote that you're, you've saved, basically. That's the, the constraint there might be that people have already implemented like that, which is going to be fine. It's just something to talk about. So I'm betting that you would like to see some code. So I've got some stuff prepared for y'all already. Um, so very simple project. We've got um, an ops um, directory with a small Docker Compose in where we're just running a Postgres to, as a Docker container to run our application against. Then our package structure looks like this. So we've got the main Kunla Quota package, which has um, the Kunla Quota application, which is just the Spring Boot application uh, with nothing special in it. So we're using component scanning here. So there's a lot of magic going on with that part. There's also a failures file at the top level. I'm not sure about this yet, but it's just listing all of the different kinds of failures that can occur during running it or doing some actions. We've got a service layer that includes the domain, the quote unquote domain. This is our current domain. <laughs> There's not much in it, but yeah. Eh? It's supposed to be uh, expanding a little bit. Um, here's the quotes service itself. So the interface looks like this. You can execute an add quote. And then since I've already a little bit built the share quote stuff, you can also execute a sharing of a quote. And then there's a find all to find all of the quotes that you want. Um, You'll notice that all of them are returning an either type. So that means that making or executing this function can either uh, conclude in some kind of a failure and then that type is defined on the left or uh, something that was not a failure, but it's the thing that you wanted to have returned. And then you'll end up with the type on the right of the either. Maybe we can contribute by coming up with some dummy quotes for you to toy around. Yes, this great idea, great suggestion. I'll show you some of the quotes that I've been using in my tests. Uh, you might have a chuckle at those as well, but it can always use fun ones. So then here's the implementation of that interface right here, which is going to use uh, a quote repository and something that allows you to share a quote. Uh, provider. So maybe we can just ignore this part for now, but when you execute the add quote command, we will first validate it. This validate uh, might have already the add failure that's going to come out. Otherwise, it's just the add quote itself that gets returned. And then we'll flat map that, flat map that shit to uh, turn that validated add quote into a real one that we can then store so that's what's happening uh, in this flat map stuff Oy. like that uh, this one we'll ignore for now and then storing is just an extension function on the quote itself that just calls the repository store <laughs> the 
this is a, a very good uh, very good quote Jones and let's keep them in the sketch file uh, stream quotes I don't know about the format yet let's just do like that uh, I actually can maybe do it like this Jonesu and I should just copy paste shouldn't I Up. nice there we go so we'll find a way to include this in our uh, in our test somewhere um, and then find all as I was trying to say is just a call to the repository itself find all we might or might not see how that stuff is implemented and then validate you can just validate that add code command and it's going to just check that all of the lines um, have a different order because if they if one of them has the same order then we'll return this kind of an, uh, an exception or like a, an error failure otherwise you'll just return the same thing ah uh, i like staff book i heard the happy to have you back oh that's so kind i heard the happy to have you back in the stream again too um yeah what was i saying ah yeah so we've got this service config which is currently a configuration where we are manually defining what things are beans or should be beans for spring um, we found that this is a nice and explicit way of defining what should be a bean instead of relying or having to rely on the magic of um, auto scanning or component scanning of spring where sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and then you'll have to figure stuff out now it's very clear if you have not defined a quotes bean or something that returns this kind of a quotes interface then your application simply won't start up which is nice because then you'll know exactly what you've missed um this also will allow us to split up or more easily isolate some um, some integration tests that use spring boot test but for now that's not really the case because we'll have to include specific configs and actually have to rely on uh, component scanning for now to have working uh, integration tests but maybe when later we'll move to um, like hexagonal architecture where we've got separate modules that define our adapters then we'll more easily be able to um, isolate those adapters and run our integration tests against that but that's for future so for now we're just going to keep it a bit simple um i wrote my own either class i'm not sure if it's been implemented properly but it seems to be working so i hope it's it's fine i've got some question about this thing here the unsafe variance um so that's some learning opportunities for me there uh when i decide to work in that and actually work uh learn about that ah this is annoying manly is there a way Ugh. guess i'll deal with that later so thanks for the offer manly kaba but i'm not interested in that i just want to go it's really um some other utility we've got in here is like an entity id box or like a wrapper type that um can be used um like so so we've got a quote which has a, an id which is a quote id and then quote id is just a simple type alias for an entity id of a quote so that's how we use this box type then we've got uh what else do we have we've got a, a command which for now is just a way to mm, distinguish incoming commands 
in the, in the REST API. We've got this either monad. We've got an extension function that belongs there to it so that you can just get the value if both types are the same. There was no uh, way for me to figure that out, how it properly works or how can we make this thing into a member function. But yeah, that's something maybe to explore later. What else do we have? Um, we've got the config. Then maybe in data, what we have here. So these are like our, our exit points. In config, we've got a separate uh, data config where we are doing or using spring JDBC data to um, auto configure data repositories. And one of them that we're using is this thing here called the quote DAO. And a quote DAO is a CRUD repository that is dealing in quote records and has a string for an ID instead of a more specifically declared type. I didn't want to register a serializer, basically. That's why um, string just works. So these IDs internally are really the quote IDs, but then I make sure that they get mapped properly uh, somewhere in this code. And as you can see, you can just define, um, um, uh, Ale, what's it called? Uh, a one-to-many relation. So one quote record has an ID and has a set of quote line records. And then quote line records. Oh, I'm only noticing a problem now. In fact, it's very interesting. Uh, break, break this thing a bit. And a quote line record is for now just a data class with a name and a text. So the issue will be, of course, that you can no longer make a quote that has two uh, as multi lines, but where both of the texts or the records or the lines, sorry, are the same. So building or saving something that looks like this. Uh, so something like this, where we've got Jones saying snarf and then me saying what Jones saying snarf when we try to save this kind of a quote it will end up like this because it's a set and sets are defined by uniqueness and the quote line record is a data class which is uniquely defined by the value of its properties so this one and this one are the same and only one of them will be retained. That's my assumption. So that's maybe something we can we can validate or write a test for later. Uh, so already found a bug. Thanks for uh, it's, uh, how live coding works, I guess. Uh, now that we're here, maybe it's also a good way to look at how this thing is implemented. So this data config here defines a beam for a code repository. Code repository is just is just a uh, yeah the order of lines also matter indeed and that's probably also something that uh, we should take into account so this db quote repository right here is uh, you you why well, you don't actually see but it implements uh, an interface called quote repository this interface is over here in the domain this thing also gets implemented by a stub and um, at, just as an easy way to, to run some tests against that. And you can see that the quote repository is able to store and find all of the quotes. And both of them, like the other service, will return either types with a failure or the thing that it's supposed to return when successful. Here's our... Uh, our, our aggregate so we've got a quote entity uh, and it contains line entities as uh, what's it called uh, a one-to-many relationship eh? here however it's defined as a list and here the line also has an order which is interesting um, and then quote share provider I think we can ignore 
So how is the DB code repository implemented? If you look at that, it's gonna, we're going to inject two things. One is a code DAO, and then the other thing is a JDBC aggregate template. And here, this is just something I had to learn because I don't know how Spring Data JDBC works, but apparently you cannot just say um, code DAO.save because then there's some logic in the background that's gonna have to check that when the entity is returned or the aggregate is returned, that the ID should have been set or something like that. And if you already set it in advance and try to save, then the quote DAO will try to um, uh, update a record. And obviously if you haven't created that one yet, it'll fail because it's gonna try and port to an update record and then that will not work. By the way, I did this and then we saw a thumbs up. This is a feature from I think FaceTime or something, where I can also go like that. Hey, and then we'll see some hearts popping up. It's nice, huh? Um, what else did I want to do? Oh yeah, these as as things. I don't think we need those anymore. Hold on. Um, in the find all, we're just gonna try doing a find and if something happens we don't even know what then fetch quotes failed will be returned um, I don't have a nice extension function or a global function like that that turns a try catch into a, an either type we could write that but this is the first time that I use it so maybe we don't need it right away um, yeah so what will happen so you'll see that there's a split in between the thing that I try to save using the DAO and the object that I'm going to return, which is our, my domain class. The reason for that is so that I can just simply use my code repository stub for test classes and then just save quote unquote quotes and um, not having to deal with those database translations or anything. So that nasty logic is going to live here. We've got some mapping functions implemented as extension functions that map back and forth between a record and a quote. Um, no. And here you can see that I actually just use the, the way that they're coming out of the database to, uh, or actually, yeah, out of, yeah, using JDBC coming out of the database. That's how I then map them. So they might end up in a different order than they were saved, like uh, Jan already mentioned. Uh, so that's that. Another cool thing about this bit here is something that I gave a lightning talk about recently. Um, and you'll see that there is there are three different tests that verify the behavior of this quote repository. One is called the DB quote repository test. Another is called the quote repository stub test. And then another one is quote repository contract test. And it's this letter that's more interesting because if we'll go look at this one, you'll see that the quote repository stub test is just an implementation of this contract test where we define the implementation of the quote repository that we want to test to the contract test itself. That also means that it's very likely that this DB quote repository works in the same way, but here we are doing uh, some auto wiring and running it in a Spring Boot test so that we can pass along an auto wired quote repository. So here we'll retrieve the, the DB quote repository actually. Um, so that allows us to keep our stub implementation and the real one working as they should. So typically when you write a stub and you add a feature to your real implementation, then they can easily diverge because you have to maintain manually your stub implementation the moment you add new features. Sometimes you'll do that test first because you simply need that behavior, but that's not always the case. 
And these contract tests really help a lot with that because so what we're doing here is in this uh, contract test, we're just declaring what it should be able to do and the behavior that the repository should be able to do. And then we just implement um, the code repository interface and have it immediately be tested by the specific ones. So if you look at can store quotes, we'll just look at, oh yeah, here's a single quote, which we can now just change with the one that Jones mentioned. Where is that scratch file? Aha. So we've got a, a Jones -u. And he said, bam. Voila, so uh, there you are. You're now included in the, in the test, Jones. Hmm, this we need to figure something out with. Um, so when you run this test, which is very interesting in fact, IntelliJ is going to suggest AI. Actually, I found two implementations for this contract test. One is a DB quote and the other is a code repository stub tests. But you can also choose to run them both. Hmm. The um actually, mm, I think, might be correct. Especially the way it's implemented right now. Because, um, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. So I was able to run a contract test and then choose which implementation of it I could run, which is very neat. But they are both working, which is which is nice. Huh? Um, if you're looking at this and you're wondering what in the freaking hell is happening here. So this a multi-line quote is part of a small domain specific language I wrote that allows you to more easily create quotes, multi-line quotes in a very nice way. Shout out in the comments if you want to see how this is implemented. Otherwise, I'll just continue uh, sharing the rest. So we've got some fetching, some storing. Uh, what else do we have? That's about it. Oh yeah, what? The space? Oh, there's a space. Thank you for noticing. Thank you so much. Nice. I guess that still works. Yay. Um, what else do we have here? Ah, oh, yeah, just uh, a way to save quotes is then just delegated to the quote repository. So that's a little bit of a caveat here. And we're using the quote repository to also store quotes uh, before fetching them. So you'll need both of the implementations, in fact, for this test to be working. But yeah, the thing you didn't see is that I grew towards this implementation, uh, so maybe when you when you're using it, uh, you'll encounter that as well. Um, okay, storing an already existing quote shouldn't work. So when we have saved a stored quote and we want to save it again using the repository, then we should get this add quote failed, but that quote already exists failure message which we've got um yeah i think that's uh that will be about it i think at least about the data stuff and then let's move on to our well we should also add to do's or something like that stream to do's so we had um make sure order is retained in the database table then there was maybe rename stub to fake um so let's keep it at those for now huh? ah yeah wait there was also 
the the part where we had to uh, make sure quotes with two lines that contain or that are the same can be saved as two lines voila something like that and then i think i want to use this style mm -hmm. yep. all right let's go back to that when we need to so let's look at the rest config finally so in here we're just defining that we want to use webmvc to route some uh, some http requests and instead of using at the rest controller like i usually do i wanted to explore a little bit how the router dsl of uh, spring boot works so spring boot since five years already i've looked it up uh comes with this dsl of defining routes your routes instead of magically mapping um, at rest controller beans to actual methods etc you can define uh, in a similar way to how http 4 k and ktor work uh, a way to route your or define your routes that you want to use so here what we're doing is we're starting a router that we're about to expose as a beam which gets an i quotes interface injected into it and this router is going to start at slash api and then within that the api routes are defined and you'll see that these api routes need or require a i quotes interface so how are these things defined? You'll see that it's a router function DSL that's gonna come out of it. So here we define that as some functions that we declare within that uh, DSL. Um, so that we don't have to define them globally. I, I could have also put them here, but then it's very weird uh, because you'll need to somehow globally define that those extension functions require uh, an i quotes interface which i guess we can do now that we've got context receivers but i didn't want to complicate things a little bit too much so yeah maybe we can do that at some point but for now we just got some extension functions on add and share quote and then uh, within that api route we are defining a route called slash quote that we also nest so when you do a get call to the slash quote the quotes so the service find all is invoked the stuff that comes out of it is an either type which means that if we do then map on it we'll get the right type out of it which is a list of quotes those found quotes will then be turned into a response body so here we we don't have any um transformation to like specific JSON types or anything. We're just exposing our domain classes, which you'll notice will just work um, because I guess Jackson is great. And then there's a recover function that defines what to do when you, uh, when you get a failure type. So out of this find all again, the right type is a list quote. And otherwise there might have gone something wrong with fetch quotes and that type will handle in this failure and we'll see that both of them will map to a server response which allows us to then just perform a get call on it and then we'll also log it. So we'll return it and log it because we don't need voila so that's how that get call is implemented wait but it's uh, easy to do. Ah, thank you for uh, subscribing, Geert. Uh, that's really nice of you. And uh, welcome back to to the stream. Eh? Uh, so then, this had me weirded out because I didn't know I had to define it. I noticed that I only had to define it the moment I started with this extra call here to uh, receive a share quote 
command. So before um, we just had something that looked like this and that would just work. So the moment I uh, added this extra post where you receive the ID in, uh, in its path, then this stopped working. So <laughs> you have to define the empty quote for some reason. Otherwise it just won't work. Or you'll, you'll not hit this handler, but you'll hit this one. And then it'll complain saying, hey, I could not parse null for an ID. Which is a bit silly, Maya. Uh, I guess that's how that works. So here in this post call, we'll receive the add quote JSON object from the body. If not, then it'll just explode. We'll try to execute that command. And as a reminder, this was a, an extension function that just calls or just passes it on to the, the, the quote service. When that successfully works, we'll get a quote back, the one that was created, and we'll respond with a, a location URI and a create, so a 201 HTTP status code. And then here we'll notice that some things while executing uh, add quote might go wrong but they're both of a type of add failure. So either your quote was invalid and then we'll have to respond with a 400 or a bad request or something else happened and we'll, it will be this type of failure. And in that case, we'll say, ah, sorry, eh? internal server error, uh, we, we messed up, but there's no message here. It's just, here's a logger that, that logs it and, and that's about it. And then the, th the last thing that I added was to share a quote, which isn't working yet. A handle we can remove apparently because that's now always specific. We've defined a fixed logger with a name and then some more extension functions to more easily transform, for example, an entity ID as a URI so that we can uh, write some nice looking code like this over here where you just say return a created with a quote ID as a URI and there you need a request because it'll be um, server specific so if your server is being served at localhost 8080 it'll use that otherwise it'll use the requests URL to then append um, the ID to the location um, right, that's the implementation, which is fairly simple, I think. So you might be wondering, hey, uh, why haven't you shown any tests of those things? Uh, I did show some of the data ones, but I haven't shown any of the other ones. So for quotes, these I have tested to check that we can view all of the quotes something that uh, something is wrong with uh, what's it called wrong with the ddb a failure is returned then when adding a quote fails a failure is returned etc might be interesting to also show how that thing works which is something that i uh, where will the input parameters be validated so currently they are validated in the rest controller itself so somewhere over here Here's where we are receiving an add quote JSON object. We'll try to execute them. And inside of this execute, so we pass it. Actually, I, I was wrong. They're not validated in the REST controller, but inside of the service. We've got like a small service layer. So it's it's this in, in this package here. There's a quote service. Just should have called it quotes, honestly. But over here, um, an ad quote will get validated first before it doing the thing that it's supposed to do, which is creating a new quote and then storing that. So inside of here, this is the thing that could return specific ad failure, which is a ad quote invalid. So there's nothing fancy going on there. Like there's no, uh, what if the, uh, no changing of validation or anything. I'm not using a library. Not yet, at least. Maybe because we don't need one yet, but maybe we will. Eh? It might also confuse people when they see the either type that they're thinking, ah, Scallop is using the Kotlin arrow or arrow.kt library. No, I just 
wrote it myself of shits and giggles. It might have been a mistake. <laughs> we'll see about that. Uh, um, where were we? Yeah, so we were looking at the tests. I was going to show you the quotes test over here. Thanks for asking the question, Alex. It's uh, nice to show some interest. So inside of here, we want to verify that whenever you execute an add quote and uh, the quote repository's store function fails with something, in this case, we'll return it. we want to set it up so that it returns an add quote failed instead of actually being able to store the quote. The way we set that up is we've got a function called fail on next and it's supposed to be listed on this quote repository stub. So let's go look at the quote repository stub and look for a fail on next function. Um, not sure that we need those. We do. So over here, we don't see a fail on next function as you can see. But there is one if we look at its implementation types. Aha, so there's a fail on next here, which is part of an interface, a separate interface called can return failure, where we are defining some kind of a failure type. Uh, the F is some kind of a failure. And it defines that there's just a fail on next that takes in a function name really, which is a string and a specific failure. and it's being implemented by this failure stub over here that says that when fail on next is called or invoked, then this uh, mop over here is being uh, added to with the function name and then the failure inside of the, what's it called? The function parameters. There's also an operator invoke function here that's gonna return a type of T and the T is going to be defined by um, this 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 either block that we're returning here. Uh, well, actually, it, it's going to return on either of the F, which is uh, has to be a, some kind of a failure, and then the type that would be returned by the function that you're invoking or trying to invoke. So this is very, I think, very abstract. Um, it took a while to, to get to this place, but once you've written it, you can now just have any kind of a stub or a fake, uh, like Jan already suggested, implement this scan return failure type and use by delegation from Kotlin to delegate to um, this or fail, um, what we call it's or fail field, which is an implementation of the failure stub. So that you can then use um, your or implement the actual abstract methods from the interface, so the code repository interface, as an or fail that then contains the specific name with an actual implementation. So now you don't have to deal with um, what happens if I've configured a failure to be returned in your actual stub. No, that behavior is delegated to the failure stub, in fact. And we can use this failure stub as a uh, callable thing. So even though this thing looks like an object, you can invoke it. So that's why this failure stub here has an operator fun invoke, so that you can call the object directly instead of creating it and then use it as a, a lambda wrapper, which is very funky. And then this, the squiggly lines are there because uh, I'm not good at generic types. <laughs> that's, that's really the answer. Uh, I wish I could just alt enter uh, or chat GPT my way out of this, but I haven't tried hard enough yet, I guess. So you'll see th this similar looking um, pattern that every time when we've got the stub, we'll say it's actually equal the implementation to an or fail with the specific name of the function that we want to bind to. 
Um, and then like the actual normal implementation of this store function. It will be probably a little bit easier once we start properly coding a bit more. Um, okay, great. I think that's about all I wanted to share. Um, ah, yeah, yeah, maybe the... Ah, it's fine. Okay. Voila, that's all of the, the stuff that we've got right now. Maybe we've got, we've got a little bit of time left. So what I want to do next is actually write that test that verifies that um, the order is the same or like the fact that we can save. Uh, wait, maybe we can commit first because I think we just did some tidy. Let's go over all of the stuff that we did. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. All right, so we've got, what did we change here? We removed unused um, typecasts. Here, there's a, we removed some curly braces. We removed unused code. We added Jones's uh, quote some join lines so this is really all of it is tidying eh? voila so we'll just call that tidying okay all right um i think i ran my tests earlier and i think one of them is failing so let's verify that that's still the case i guess yay and indeed, I have the, the end run tests I haven't shown yet. Um, so this one, which is the, the failing one, I think we can for now just disable it until uh, until implemented. Because this is um, an outside in test, like a big one, I guess. And here mm, we're starting up. Where is it? We're just starting up the Kuna Quota application. We're injecting a REST template and a JDBC operation to clean the quotes table every time we, we run a test function. This helps us run all of these test methods in isolation. Huh? Because otherwise, when this one runs first, it's adding some quotes. And then over here, we are expecting the list to be empty when in actuality we're retrieving this quote over here so that then the test fails because uh, we haven't uh, added proper isolation so what this thing is doing is it's creating an add quote uh, command it's then posting that to our endpoint so that way we can also verify that we've set up the correct routes huh? <clears throat> i haven't found a way to unit test that part like i saw duncan mcgregor post on on his youtube channel uh some nice ways to just test the handler of an http4k route which is a uh, very nice and i know in, in ktor you can do something similar but there you still have to have some kind of an application that is being run so that's similar to how spring boot tests work in fact that they they work on testing your rest endpoint calls versus a real running uh, application here we're using test containers where is it yeah it will be inside of this Kuna application we're using test containers to boot up a postgres database in docker so that we can run our um, tests against that we're using a rest template to post to slash api slash quote with that quote we want to add we verify that the path that came out of it is not empty and then we're gonna actually go and fetch all of the quotes and here we want to verify that um, if we retrieve all of the quotes that one of them at least contains this new locations UUID that's the thing that happens here and we also want to verify that we can actually pro probably merge both of these to just get the first one and we're only saving one quote so maybe we can just change that here too 
it would make a little bit more sense, I think, to see this um, consistency in, in retrieving whatever that we want to uh, assert on. Because that's really what we want to do. Eh? Um, and then here is just an error report uh, saying that if you decided to add multiple lines that have the same order, you should get this message here. Uh, that's That's about it. And that the list is then empty, of course. Eh? So these are broad end-to-end -end tests that verify the entire application's functionality against a real database. But so, in fact, what we could do now is we could write another test that says adding a multi-line quote, which has two lines that are exactly the same should work i'm not really inspired yet exactly like this so we can just duplicate that but then give them a different order so it for sure should work then we don't want to exchange for a quote error we want to uh, post for location so that we can go fetch that location that it's this thing again um, maybe it would have already been enough to just validate that the uh, we get a created back at first at least but that will i think or my guess is that it will already work and then what we want to do is we want to also assert this part here eh? so that when you then patch the list of existing quotes that the first one contains a similar list of lines to the ones that we've set up over here. So here we've got two lines supposedly and I think that this will not work because of how sets work. And it doesn't because you're only getting the first one. Great. So it's it's nice to see that even bugs you can still recognize. All right, now you can you can help me fix this. Huh? I think one of the ideas was to save the order ID along with. along with um, it's called in the quote line record so that should be over here and what we want to do here is not just add a name and a text but also an order which can be an int for now and we can now just lean on the compiler and then figure out where we need to fix stuff just delete whatever is causing the issue and keep repeating until the issue is fixed I'm afraid that if we do that, we will end up with uh, less features than before. I think other tests will, will fail, but yeah, I guess your answer will be then just delete those as well. Yeah. <laughs> so I think here uh, we're lucky because line already has an order and we can just also save that or pass that on to the quote line if I can better save it. So now let's figure out if, if we if we do that then it's also very likely that we need to change both of these that will be more difficult to test i guess um although you can just pass along um order like uh, what's it called 9, 10, 11 for example, and then it will simply not match with the index here. So that will be the next test I think that we'll, we'll create. Huh? Uh, let's try running it and see what happens. I'm going to guess that it's going to fail because we also have a liquid base or flyway. Yeah, voila. So there's no column called order for the quote lines. So uh, it's something that I haven't shown yet. Minimalism is very trendy, yeah. 
So here we've got uh, a quote lines table. I guess we're just using some kind of a convention that, uh, what's it called? Uh, Spring Data GGPC is using to set up this, this connection. So I don't really know the, the, the thing that will be inside of quote will be exactly this ID over here. And so that indicates the, what's it called? The actual link. So we'll need to have the order here as a column. Oui. There's a lightning going on. So my puppy dog is still outside. What? There's a fuck JS. I. <laughs> For minimalism. <laughs> That's great. I don't know. Let's do a number. Is it a thing? I saw numeric. Thanks, Tally J. Let's see if this works. Let's just run the tests. We. What now? Ah, there's something else. Syntax error. I don't understand this. What is a good error type that we can use? Or er, sorry, a uh, numeric type. Yeah, it was it. What well, there was a flash. Actually, it was lightning that made me look. It was crazy. This flash of lightning all over there. Uh, help. Number types like this. Int. Oh shit! You're right. It's int. What now? Still syntax errors. Have I set my... Uh, how do you do that again? I think there is a way to... Here. No. I want to change the dialect. Dialect. Of uh, this one. Change dialect to uh, Postgres. Okay. Oh, it might be a reserved keyword. Yeah. God damn it. All right, so uh, maybe this will work. Still no dice. Ah, yeah, so it's you, it needs lowercase. That's the other thing I've noticed. And you'll see, you'll see that this stuff is also quoted, eh? That was also a difficult trial and error. So Postgres is... Um, Case sensitive. Something I never knew. The uh, uh, int works, which is great, but we'll have to quote it or double quote it. Uh, okay, so now that that test works, I wonder if all of the other tests also work. Because if they do, then I guess we might need a database code repository test or something. Like a proper one where we want to duplicate this issue because this is an end-to-end -end test. I'm not sure that I want to actually keep it. It's a, just a way to uh, to have this validation. But maybe I want to move it to uh, the database contract test. Eh? Or to the code repository contract test. That's what I mean. So adding a multi-line quote that has different... Uh, order numbers then an index should work again very uh, silly naming eh? uh, here what we want to do is if we can honestly just increase them with like a three and then this is a four and what will be returned is one and two let's see if i'm correct <gasps> there is a UUID data type. God damn. Maybe we can use that to properly go to uh, the UUID itself. Voila, just as I suspected. So this we know we can fix again. And by the way, that will not uh, fail for the stub repository. Eh? So that's uh, something that the, the repository just works with. 
Thanks again, Vincent. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop real soon as well. So thanks for hanging out. See you next time. Which should be next week, by the way. And um, you can expect text message real soon. So we don't need mob indexed. We'll we we'll don't need we we'll don't need that neither. So what we can just do is use the order that we get back from a code line record. Uh, <laughs> okay, I deserve that one. I deserve that one. Voila. So here it is. The test works. Now we can just clean up. We don't need the index. That means we don't need map indexed. We can just use map. Voila. And then run the tests again. Okay. Voila. So, thanks for improving my code. Um, maybe a last thing that I want to do now is move those tests from... Where was it? The end-to-end -end test, I guess. I want to move these to our quote test. Not sure it will actually work. So, wait. I'll, before I do that, I'll just copy them. Um, let's go to the contract tests, indeed. Uh, I'll just paste them in here and then we'll rework them so that they fall more in line with what we want to uh, what we want to have them to look like in fact so uh, as you can see what we want to do is just want to store those things so let's try that we have lines we then want to create a quote with a new quote ID do we have new? Yeah, we got new for that. And we need the lines that you want. And that's it. And this is the thing we want to save. And when we do, when we fetch it out of the database again, so that's uh, quote repository dot find all. Let's get the first one or get or did we not have like something like yeah, voilà. so ease of things we've got a value or throw that just if it would be a failure then we'll get an exception instead uh otherwise we'll just get the real value um so on this we can assert that this thing's um first one which is the quote is equal to and we can just use that wait uh, expected quote is equal to this expected quote the one that we just saved in fact and then this one we should see run that means i can comment this one out for now so hopefully this just works oh does nay why not so the expected one has a different id that is interesting why is that oh and and the uh oh we might not be clearing some things or something. I don't know what's going on here. Were we just lucky then? That they always run in the same order? What the hell is this? Expected, because... Oh. Alright, eh? This is the one that's failing. What are we doing here? We're setting up a, a real quote, a new one that we pass along with where Lionel says shut the fuck up snarf twice. We save that and it's that one that's failing. Eh? Adding a multi-line quote which has two lines that are exactly the same should work. So then when we try to do find all after we've just saved it Ah, yeah, we're 
using the first one. Now I'm. I think that in fact. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's probably why. Um. Ooh. This indicates a bug in our in our uh, or like a bug, a bad practice in the way we've set up these tests. Then in fact. Because um, what we're doing here in the, the regular one, the store multi-line quotes, I bet if I put something here where we just use the find all, then we will um, retrieve all of the quotes, in fact, not just the, the, the one that we just stored. And the reason why it works here is because this store, in fact, let's go to the implementation. So what we'll do is we'll, if it's correct, we'll just do an insert. And then whatever comes out of this insert is the thing that will also map to a quote. So this insert is just going to return the thing that you save, but I'm not sure if it tries to actually fetch it out of the database. So that we can, we can do like a bit of a sanity check here too. Huh? So if we write it in the same style, so we say, do um, a save if we then assert that. So this is the one that we expect. And then this is in fact the actual one because that one was saved. So we assert that actual is equal to expect. Expect. Run. Very curious. Just want the database code. Was the test to run? Ah, that works. So that means that our DAO is just returning the object that we're saving instead of actually going via the database to go fetch it again. So we'll have to manually put that in. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Huh? That is unfortunate. Okay, so let's, this is the thing we expect. We'll ask our repository to store this one. And
uh, might still work in fact so comparing actual two or something let's check if actual two is equal to expect so it's the same then add then that means that if we do a store the dao is going to return as the thing that we saved quote unquote which should be the equivalent of this thing and then uh, ah voila so then we do know it can go via Oui. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a value of throw. Because store is gonna return a result type. But it still fails. Yeah, okay. Ah, voila. Okay, so then we can use it, in fact. I'm not sure which one is more clear, though. Okay, let's do this. And then. Uh, I think this is okay, and then we can just fix that part again. Uh, and that also means that we can have the same type of trust, I guess, mm, from here. And then make this test work in the same way like we, we did before. So. Uh, we want this kind of thing where we add the lines with different uh, order numbers and now I think what we can do is just write the same looking code like that and then this one is going to work as well for all of them. Oui. Por que no? Ah, uh, we're still adding the one in there. That's uh, not very smart. So if you go back to the database repository, this one, they uh, just pass along the order itself and it should be green. Yay. Okay, now let's run all of the tests. And then what I want to do is remove these because now we've got them covered with uh, database tests. Voila. Alright, so lesson learned is that next time when we know what the likely problem is, let's just write an integration test that proves the bug more closely to the cause of it instead of writing an end-to-end -end test for it and then having to uh, revert it again or rewrite it great we can commit this so this is fixed bug where order was being kept or saved voila okay and then the other thing in the to do uh, stream there was a sketch file um this one we fixed this one we fixed this one we didn't do and i just missed another one that i wanted to do next time too but that will be for next time all right uh, we've committed some stuff i can push this and then that will be the end of today i'll make sure to um make the repository public and then uh, I hope to see you next week. Thank you so much for, for hanging out and making me feel welcome again to Twitch. Uh, let me know if I can improve. There's always the Discord. Wait, does the bot still work? Oh, there's not. I used to have like a stream elements thing or something. I forget what it was. Some kind of a bot that would spam the the link to the discord so i guess now i'll we'll have to manually manually share it uh, here's a temp invite i guess um. all right thanks for hanging out hope to see you next time 
hope it was useful as well. If not, I'll, uh, I'll hear it in the chat or in the Discord. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.